Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. When Joseph interpreted the dream of the wine presser, look at me, Bible students. Joseph pleaded with the man and said, Now that you have gained favor with the king, please, when you go back to the king, tell him I am innocent. Not everybody in prison is a criminal, a prison is where both good and bad people stay. Be careful when you judge those in prison. You may be calling Joseph a criminal. Be careful with those who hang on the cross because Jesus is also there. The prison and the cross are mysterious places where you don't commend because both good and bad people meet at the prison and meet at the cross. Is that a lesson already for someone? So don't generalize everybody in the prison and call him a criminal. Joseph is there. Your prime minister is there. The Bible tells us that the man said, no problem, Joseph, thank you for interpreting my dream. As soon as he got to the palace, the Bible says he forgot. Ha! One man's forgetfulness punished a great destiny and added two years to his suffering. One man's forgetfulness. Could it be that by now you would have gotten a job? Could it be by now the promotion would have come? Someone promised you that you will get a scholarship, but he forgot. And sometimes that forgetfulness is not just a human thing. It is sponsored by demon spirits. But the Bible says, one night, power for you. One night, when the king went to bed, he had a dream. And the heavens were shot over the sorcerers and the astrologers. They conjured their things and it did not work. And the man said, I remember my wrong this day. It takes power to make men remember. I remember. King, I remember. I have wronged someone. There was someone who interpreted my dream. And I was supposed to advocate his innocence. But I forgot. The Bible, your Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph. And they brought him out of his dungeon. When Joseph stood before the king with confidence beyond principles beyond information he had power the king panicking told him all the dream and he laughed he said king cheer up god will give the king himself an answer of peace he said the dream you saw is not about cows and plants it's about time this is a revelation of what is to come and he began to suggest an economic principle you now see where principle came in when power brought the revelation in fact, you find the same thing happened to Daniel in chapter 2. I think verse 28 or thereabout. It says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And Daniel began to bless the God of heaven. In all your sojourn, please hear me. Don't carry principles alone. Principles are potent. They bring organization. They maintain growth. They bring increase. But they may not fight demons. They may not fight the antagonisms within the hearts of men. When you are filling up your bag for destiny, you know how it is when you are traveling? Sometimes you carry some things that may not make sense. For instance, your perfume looks very small until you spend hours and now you now begin to smell not fresh. You will see the relevance of that small bottle that you carried. Are we together now? This is how it is. God is giving you the arsenals that you need to carry on this bag of destiny. Some of you forgot power. You've carried principles. You've arranged them. Unfortunately, the journey is very far. A time will come when the brook will dry. You don't need principle. There is no principle to get water in the desert. It takes power. When you find water in the desert, you can use principles to bottle it up well. But when there is no water, there is no principle that brings it. It takes power. Is someone learning now? Now, do not misunderstand me. I am not against principles. They are potent. The laws of the heavens, the ordinances of heaven. But I'm telling you, in addition to principles, when it has to do with destiny actualization, 
as a man of God, you will get to a point in your life where there are spirits that have vowed that your children will never rise. They have vowed that your children will never shine. A child is done with a university or college, maybe the only one, the breadwinner of the family, and you will hear that a bike just hit him and he died. No, sir. No, sir. The widow, the woman at Nain, the widow at Wayne, at Nain, had a spirit that was killing all the men in her life. It was first her husband that died, then her only son. And Jesus said, no, stop. It cannot continue this way brought the boy back to life say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves I was touched when I watched the testimony of the dear lady you see that now scheduled for surgery but the power of God but the power of God I have seen firsthand what the power of God can do in rewriting destinies I have seen firsthand what the power of God can do in bringing vitality, health, restoration. It takes power to command restoration. It takes power to claim your portion upon the earth. It says right from the day of John the Baptist and up until now, the kingdom suffered violence. One version says the kingdom advances forcefully and it says the violent shall take it. Hallelujah. Is someone learning by force? Now one more thought and then we begin to pray. Your efficiency as a child of God and as a witness is power dependent. Your efficiency as a child of God and as a witness of the kingdom, a witness to the name of the Lord is power dependent. Without the engracing of the Holy Spirit upon your life, you will not be able to be an effective witness and you will not be able to actualize destiny. Who is learning tonight? There are three channels very quickly for accessing genuine spiritual power. The power that drives your destiny. Lend me your attention now. There are three biblical channels for accessing genuine spiritual power. Number one. Number one. The first channel for accessing spiritual power is through a direct encounter with God. You can have a direct encounter with the God of the Bible like Solomon had and it translates to power. Men can meet God through an encounter, genuine encounter. These encounters are enhanced by prayer and fasting. These encounters are enhanced by consecration that a man can lock up himself with a desire to find God, to encounter the mighty and the marvelous hand of God. And in response to the sincerity of your cry, God can visit men. And when he does visit men, he leaves an imprint of his power. Hallelujah. There are people who have very nice fragrances, very nice perfumes. When they come into your house, even if it's just for 10 minutes, they come to greet you, they come to drop something. By the time they are gone, you will almost not forget that they came throughout the day because there, there is a residue of that presence. That's what happens when His Majesty comes to your realm. He comes with power and glory when He rests upon you. The residue, you turn left and right and you see that power has been deposited reminds me of my encounter with the Lord Jesus if it is God you meet the Lord Jesus himself it is impossible among the many souvenirs he leaves with you his power he may give you a word he may give you an instruction he may give you a mandate but with it will come power here's what Jesus told them tarry ye even though you already have the information your mindset has been transformed but tarry ye until the trigger to your destiny the green light the matching order is the arrival of power just because you have a correct information does not mean all is set open the curtain only when power arrives tarry the disciples were not unlearned 
they had been mentored by Jesus himself but he said tarry the Bible says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were gathered together in one accord suddenly there was a sound like it was in Ezekiel 37 there was a sound and when that sound came it rested it filled the entire room and they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire the Bible says it came and rested on everyone that means everyone in this place tonight including those outside that your portion no one had to fight another person's fire everyone's fire came right to where he was right to where he was and rested upon him they were empowered watch this timid unlearned Peter got up under the influence of power and he began to speak recalling the testimony of David connecting with that of Joel he said this is that that prophetic word that it shall come to pass in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh this is that and at the end of his sermon your bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do he said repent for the remission of your sin and you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you to your children your children's children as far as the lord himself will call three thousand people were saved in one day because power was added to knowledge three thousand people when they had knowledge alone they went and returned there was no result they had knowledge but the epileptic patient will not be healed but when power was added to knowledge someone you came for this conference not because you are ignorant in truth you have access knowledge to a degree but the knowledge does not have validation you came for this conference to add power to knowledge you know about fasting correctly so you know about the word correctly so you know about mindsets correctly so but you teach but there is no demonstration of the spirit you came for this conference again i repeat to add power to knowledge man of god add power to knowledge businessman add power to knowledge dear parents add power to knowledge in all your getting don't just stop at transformation there is a journey beyond transformation is a journey of empowerment journey of empowerment the journey of empowerment three ways we access spiritual power number one a direct encounter with the God of the Bible a direct encounter men can encounter God and receive with that encounter power mary encountered the holy ghost and received the power to be with child and to birth that child number two the second way we access genuine spiritual empowerment is by engaging light from scripture light from scripture light from scripture light from scripture brings power there is a dimension of god's power that is contained within his word Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 says in the sun-like splendor was the hiding place of his power his power hides in his light when you find his light you also find with it his power number three the third and final way according to scripture for accessing genuine spiritual power is through the mystery of impartation the mystery of of impartation the mystery of impartation that when God wants to transfer spiritual possibilities when God wants to allow his anointing his graces in their various dimensions to rest upon people he deploys the mystery called impartation is someone learning what is impartation a transference of spirits a transference of graces a transference of possibilities a transference of spirits the word spirits there does not just mean spirits hanging around spirit is just a name for a spiritual substance that which drives your life in the physical because according to scripture the realm of the spirit drives the physical realm a transfer of graces the bible says and god is able to make all grace grace is dimensional the grace that favors you may not heal you no Jaira 
and Rafa is the same God but his operation as touching those dimensions are not the same when you want to be healed you don't call on Jaira Jaira prospers it does not heal are we together now what the God of Abraham will do for you the God of Isaac will not do even though it's the same God it is the dimensional operation of God for instance if you come to the kitchen and see a woman cooking that woman may be an excellent chef in the kitchen but she's a CEO you don't come and drop your CV in her kitchen that is another dimension of her when you need a job you wait to see her in the capacity of her office everyone is multi-dimensional even as humans that is so with God because we're created in his image and his likeness he can be many things to many people this is what makes him have the name I am that I am to someone I can be a restorer to another person I can be a healer to another person I can be the God who brings intelligence to his mind to another person I can be the Shaddai El Shaddai the multi-breasted one the all-sufficient one to another I can be seeking revealing my righteousness to him are we together now God can be all of us do not need God to operate at the same level and with the same dimension my problem is not the same as your problem if it's a financial problem you need Jaira I may need Sikenu because there is a threatening life threatening disease that wants to eat up my body at that point no matter how prosperous you are you are on your way to the grave except if Rafa comes in are we learning now so watch this an impartation allows you to have access to the variety of graces that are available for your empowerment let me your attention the variety of graces that are available for your empowerment man of god as a man of god in ministry you will be surprised how many dimensions of graces and empowerment you need there is the spirit of wisdom there is favor there is speed there is access to the gift of man there is the spirit of revelation there is the grace for prayer and supplication it is all these graces that work together to produce the champion that you become the bible says now that you have this grace it says abound in this grace also abound in this grace also I know you have the grace for prayer but abound in this grace also there is another kind of grace your assignment tonight is to believe God and trust God why are we gathered here tonight to see his power revealed but beyond that ladies and gentlemen I want you to hear me we are gathered here tonight because your destiny has been crying for a certain kind of anointing the mantle of your destiny has been hovering around Ghana hovering around Africa where is the one upon whom I should rest on and God took you from everywhere you came from converged you in a meeting tonight and now he's prepared your heart through his word it's time to receive you are a product of the graces that rest upon your head the Bible says thou anointest my head with oil my cup run it over hallelujah praise the name of the Lord look at me impartations are real you've heard my story I knew that I had a mandate to go across the nations bringing the saving healing transforming power of Jesus but from my lowly estate why would that be possible I had prophecy already on my head but I knew without impartation I waste my time and I searched for those who had that grace I found a man called Reinhard Bonke I said this is it whatever will make a man come to Africa and pack stadiums full with hundreds of thousands and millions of people I remember just like my precious people who are outside it was on a beautiful cold night I remember still recall Redhard Bonke was preaching a very simple message and I was somewhere lost in the crowd with dedication and passion already a man of God but I shelved the pride that comes with ministry because you don't receive from colleagues there has to be a spiritual potential difference you must admit that you are in need I will soon show you the law of impartation impartation does not just happen because there is desire there are rules that must be kept Renard Bonke stood there 
my hunger had reached the heavens you've heard my story i will repeat them for as many times as i find myself in your midst the first day was awesome great miracles how could such a man looking very frail it wasn't about his english it wasn't about the rema the simplicity of his communication but tremendous power by the second day i said i will not only come for the crusade i must have that grace I came early about 3 p.m. in the afternoon I was looking for something to do I was fasting praying in tongues with hunger I was already a man of God and I saw them wheeling people to the front those who were on wheelchair I went to one of the people and said please let me help and I remember they told me they said no there's a committee that has been trained I said committee you are joking you don't know where I traveled from committee I remember holding one of the wheelchairs and I was wheeling the person to the front and praying in tongues. I said, Lord, this is how my meetings will be too. I, I honor the grace that already carries this. There is a story behind every glory. Oh. Don't just celebrate the glory. Learn the story too. Are we together? You've heard me say I'm a product of many anointings. It is true. I have encountered Jesus by the privilege of God's mercy. But an encounter with Jesus does not exempt you from impartation. Even if you are Paul and you meet Jesus, he will still send you to the house of Judas and Ananias will still come and meet you to continue the ministry. Not even an encounter with Jesus will stop you from enjoying the ministry of men. You will think because Jesus met Paul already, why will he need a man? Ananias came and said, Brother Saul, Jesus whom you saw has sent me that I should open your eyes and that you'll be filled with the spirit he would have remained a blind apostle and he would have said i met jesus and became blind not knowing there was already a provision in the body to open his eyes and to fill him with the spirit Is someone learning listen oh, when it comes to the business of power by the mercy of god i know what i'm saying please listen you are not hearing cunningly devised fables by the mercies of God. Reinhard Bonke was done preaching. I stood for six hours. There were no chairs. There were no seats. You would stand. I was tired but determined. Hungry but determined. I said whatever happened, something must land on this frail destiny this night. And when Reinhard Bonke was done, listen carefully everybody. The Bible says, I mean, I said the Bible history now. I'm used to saying the Bible said. He was about to drink water to impart the spirit for baptism and miracles. As soon as he took a cup of water to take, I was in that crusade ground. My hunger had reached the heavens. It's not human worship. It's a desperation, honor to God's system of transferring graces. The heaven just opened over me. I saw a giant bird hovering around that crusade ground. I thought everybody was seeing it. There were silvery brands. It was not flying. It was just soaring. I said, what is this? The first time I ever saw the semblance of the Holy Spirit in a vision. I was a man already given to visions by that time. But I was seeing a spectacular sight. It was like it was shining bright all over the crusade ground. And the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2 and the Spirit of God hovered around the face of the waters do you know by the time I came back to myself I was already back in the stage I didn't even know when I had turned I said something has come finally I knew that grace had come so when you see the things by the mercy of God that we do from nation to nation place to place it is proof that impartations are real I knew that I needed favor in my life because I didn't want to manipulate people in ministry and I knew that if I were not empowered having the grace for favor the pressure from ministry will lead me towards compromise I took one month to pray and study on favor I started searching for careers of that grace among the many people I found 
was the man dr mike modok i saw the wisdom of god i saw that this man had favor i bought his books i read his books i prayed for one month non-stop and that grace came when it came every devil in hell knew the grace had landed I had the honor of visiting him one last time in Dallas just to honor him again to say thank you sir your sacrifice and your diligence and the grace that was upon you and when that man as old and frail as he's become tears came out of his eyes as he cried and from the depth of his heart he said he was going to lay hands afresh I didn't say I'm a did you see the stadium I packed no you don't do that you get down your knees I went to preach somewhere along the southern part of Nigeria and when I was done I was on my way going and we got to a very small but mysterious village people live mysteriously long within that place you would see obituaries 120 something 130 something on my way going to preach I saw an obituary of a man 136 he just died i said no once you see consistency there is a grace within this region maybe one grandfather entered a covenant with god and god swore that his children and children's children will live long i want to show you the value of impartation because i know that in my life as a man of god there are arrows that will fly by day i travel all the time and i don't want to die young not because of fear i need this body for the assignment rather than foolishly just saying i shall not die you search for the grace that has proven it experientially are we together listen we're about to pray i'm not wasting your time when we were done preaching mighty beating on our way returning because we needed to connect by road to an airport and then we'll fly back and I told the driver, stop when we got to that place. I came out where the obituary was. It was a Yoruba nation, a Yoruba city. So um, I couldn't speak Yoruba and everybody there could not really speak English like that. And we found somebody who could speak limited English. We said, where is the oldest man in this village? We are pastors. We want to just see him and honor him and have him bless us because we've discerned that there is a grace for long life i saw some women standing there they were looking old but i just left them then they took us to one man when we entered the place the man was laughing and i would talk then they will interpret we said sir we're just young people we are pastors and we know that there is a grace for long life here and we're pleading if you would just speak a blessing the man laughed with confidence see those who carry this thing bar, they know they have it. A hospital does not travel around looking for patients. When you are a patient, you find the hospital and go there. The man looked at us and he said, kneel down. He didn't say you are a man of God. I don't care where you are coming from. You are looking for the grace for long life. Kneel down. I got down on my knees and the man began to pray. And when he began to pray, it's it. I felt like a crown was being put upon my head. Once he was done praying, we honored him. Bless God for him. We are on our way, sir, to get into the car. And then I felt led to go and thank the women who were standing there. When I now went to thank the women, the 136 year old, by the way, he was a man of God who just died. They said that's his wife. His wife was still alive. I said, let's go back. Ah, no. If the man had died, two have become one. Since I could not meet the man, that woman was maybe 120 something. She was still standing. No help, no aid, no nothing. Bright vision. I said, my God, graces are real. Oh. I'm telling you grace, until you encounter the careers, you will think these stories are lies. Graces are real. There are individuals when you encounter, you will never beg again. They carry mysterious graces. Our generation does not know the mystery of impartation. It's the reason why many people are genuinely called, but they do not rise. We met the woman, and they now interpreted again. We said, since this is your husband, mama, this one, you are, I don't know if it is to call you a great-grandmother, but please, this small boy, these small children who have come, 
please can you just pick the blessing of a mother and the woman laughed she said follow me we went into a room and she was showing us the pictures she was the wife of his youth i hope you know those days they married very early as teenagers and she was the wife of his youth till old age when she was done showing us the pictures we said please pray and she took off her shoes and put her bare feet on the ground and we knelt down for the next 15 minutes this woman was raining blessings from her spirit these are the stories you will not see on social media unfortunately behind every result there are graces that drive it are you learning now when I carried that grace in addition to my obedience to scripture I knew that no devil would take my life before my time and you you need to know how much death has tested this man to know what I'm saying let your power Holy Ghost power rest on me rest on me listen I saw the man Dr. Miles Munro, a daily revered mentor. I saw that he had a unique grace that even though he excelled as a man of God, he had governmental influence. This man was an advisor to presidents and kings. I saw that the model of his apostolic ministry, what was God was calling me to, beyond just the church walls. I saw that this man exerted tremendous influence. When Nelson Mandela, late of South Africa, when he came out of prison, Dr. Miles Munro was one of the delegates that were sent to go and receive him. I said, this is a grace. A grace that goes beyond church walls so that your relevance does not just end with signs and wonders. You can speak to kings and nobles with intelligence. I coveted that grace. Let me tell you, I was in Wari, the south southern part of Nigeria, the night he died I went to preach for a conference at a conference for a church I woke up in the morning to pray God is my witness I felt a sharp pain very sharp pain around my ribs I didn't know what was happening spirit connections are real a very sharp pain and I said what is happening a few minutes later on the pain left and I just saw later on an obituary that he crashed in a plane crash and I said God what is this what happened but I knew something had rested upon my life that brings influence beyond the church walls it takes more than being sincere for the nation and non-church organizations to call you I've had the honor to stand before kings I've had the honor to speak before nobles on non-church non-christian activities i know where the grace came from graces are like addresses you can know where they came from is someone learning i hope i'm not sounding arrogant i'm just challenging you because something must rest upon you tonight are we together do you know charles and francis hunter of late Yes, they, they had one of the greatest healing ministries in modern times. I watched their videos. Tremendous healings that you would think are exaggerations. I saw it. I bought their videos, about 16 hours of their healing videos. And then it was not CDs. It was um, uh, 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 VHS. What they call it? I hope I'm right. Yes, cassette. You will listen and sleep and wake up and listen again. If your, recharge card, if your rechargeable lantern dies, you power it up and continue. Do you know, my plan was to go to U.S. I think I've said it perhaps in your church. I was to go to U.S. My desire was to go and serve, not to go, even if it was just to scrub their toilets, not human worship, just to honor them. Unfortunately, that did not happen. But even though I did not meet them, that hunger and that sincerity, the grace still landed. One of our fathers of faith, not too long ago, I had the honor 
or being with him alone in a room and I said sir please pray for me just to place your hand and speak over me and he asked one of his sons to give way and I was alone with him I would not say in open what he said in the prayer but I knew something came from upon my life we are products of many graces when you see possibilities happen in the life of people please hear me Takoradi we are products of many graces why am I saying this to you because when God sends a word to Jacob it is supposed to be lighted upon Israel there is no monopoly of grace there is no monopoly of the anointing we receive so that we become channels are we together now but let me tell you this before we pray there are three laws that govern receiving impartation number one is called discernment when Elijah was about to impart upon Elisha Elisha was not the only person who wanted the anointing there were other sons of the prophets too but Elisha was the one who discerned Elijah said if you can see me was he not looking at him already that kind of scene is not a physical scene if you can discern what I represent as touching the message of God he said he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet you can receive a prophet in the name of your brother in the name of your husband in the name of your tribesman you will not receive a prophet's reward number two honor the second law that governs impartation is honor honor a grace you despise will never flow to you a vessel you despise will never be able to bless you it doesn't matter how many hands are laid upon you there are people today I have vowed as a covenant that I will honor them in life and in death it's not about being perfect it's a covenant commitment Noah took wine and he was drunk and when he was drunk as a father he fell shamefully on the ground and one of his sons came and saw the father's nakedness and laughed at it and called the brothers and said can you come and imagine our father embarrassing himself like this when one of the sons came he said you are not serious he got a cloth and turned backward but do you know as drunk as Noah was when he got up he knew who saw him nobody told him the grace was still there he said you looked at my nakedness a servant of servants shall you be fathers are not perfect those who go before us are not perfect the careers of the oil we need are not perfect in many regards they are human they can be frail sometimes you can see things about their life that may not be the best but like I thought can you endure the limitations and focus on the grace looking for a perfect vessel will leave you cheated forever because you are not even one yourself if Jesus were to walk upon the earth and he was going to be your mentor you will fight him one day a man who flogs people one day then he's with a woman at the well alone alone then he enters the house of a corrupt tax collector and he tells you I'm sinless you say you are joking don't, don't play with my intelligence. That is the Jesus you are saying you love. Many people love him because he's in heaven. If he's on earth, in two weeks you'll be tired. I'm just saying that not to justify licentiousness. I'm just saying the treasure is in earthen vessels. Searching for perfection before your heart opens will leave you in embarrassment. The vessels are frail. Some of them are temperous like Elijah. Some of them may be unstable like Abraham. Yet God will not choose another vessel. It is still Abraham. As temperous as Elijah was, the anointing did not leave him to another person. Hmm. Hallelujah. Let me teach you. Whenever you go for a meeting or you go for a place, you go to a place, look beyond the limitations there you may not enjoy the praise and worship maybe they may be jumping around maybe but hence you are there look for Jesus if you search for Jesus in the midst of the lampstands you will find the son of man no matter how frail sometimes the careers of this anointing can be childish as men of God we can behave very immature sometimes in all honesty look beyond that limitation and focus on the anointing the man tells a lot of lying testimonies. May God help him. But there is still an anointing there. Huh. 
sometimes the people jump and exaggerate things don't worry forgive them and pray for their growth but there is still a testimony there the man loves God but he loves money too forgive him while he's learning and focus on receiving it because let me tell you the vessels that come to you may not come in a fashion that sometimes you desire look beyond their frailty and see to it that although the man may be a talkative there is a real anointing within him if you can endure the smell the mystery of impartation is hidden in the riddle of samson he said out of something strong has come something sweet it was a carcass the bee went to make honey in a carcass they were fresh trees but they chose a carcass so if you want honey you have to endure the smell of the carcass the question is can you endure the smell it is true that the vessel may not be perfect but out of something strong and sometimes something weak there is still something sweet within it your father may have been an irresponsible man but one wisdom key he will tell you may be what saves your company is someone learning tonight we have a few minutes we are going to be praying I will speak over the sick and declare an impartation upon you and we're done rise up on your feet for your name is holy your holy Holy are you, Lord. For your name is holy. Holy. Lord. For your name is holy. Holy. anointings the empowerments that i need for the next level of my life i contend for them by faith tonight someone open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray outside pray follow it online pray the grace needed the grace needed for the next level the impartation needed for the next level the grace needed for the next level the Ah, someone pray. The grace needed to bring glory to your apostolic call, your prophetic call, your pastoral call, your evangelistic call. Take a minute to pray. Take a minute to invest in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 29, please everybody look. Matthew chapter 25. I believe that should be verse 8 or 9. Matthew 25. This was the parable of ten virgins please look up the first thing you notice from that parable is that all of them were virgins so it was not an issue of righteousness or unrighteousness 
all ten were virgins but the Bible says five were wise and it took time to know that five were wise because all of them started at the same it was the delay of the bridegroom that showed those who were wise and those who were foolish are we together and the Bible says that in verse 8 the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil we don't need candles we don't need lanterns we have them but give us of your oil for our lambs even though without oil are going down verse 9 here is the recommendation but the wise answered and said not so we too we received he said lest there be not enough for us but if your oil is finished there is a recommendation it says go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself there are some people commissioned by God by mercy on earth they are called them that sell only that they do you don't buy it with money this is not talking about transaction manipulative transaction I don't know what year it was that I came here I preached a message by the truth please go and listen to it I told you that there are five currencies that we use to purchase things within the spirit number one is called humility with meekness you can use meekness as a currency and buy you can use hunger as a currency and buy you can use faith as a currency and buy it says go to them that sell and buy in every generation there are a few privileged them that sell custodians of the graces of God in many regards it is an election of grace so no man can boast when you have found mercy with God you will never find a reason to brag but let me tell you the truth it takes humility to draw this thing is a relay the mantles that are upon our lives are older than us we also received it we also received it hmm. those who ran ran faithfully and at the end of their days they turned and said whoever is willing let him come and some of us with childlike humility we came and by mercy he has granted us this grace let me tell you this there is oil you need for your lamp and by the mercies of God in this place there are them that sell hmm. in this place there are them that sell it's only that your currency tonight can be discernment your currency tonight can be humility your currency tonight can be hunger are we together so you're going to pray the final prayer Lord I humble myself to receive I humble myself to receive go ahead and pray go ahead and pray go ahead and pray go ahead and pray give me oil in my lamp Until the coming of the King Give me oil in my lamp Let my light never be dim Keep me burning, keep me burning Until the coming of the King For out of my belly Shall flow rivers some living waters are you praying that out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living waters here out of my belly say out of my belly shall flow some living water 
what I'm seeing in the spirit and I'm hearing the spirit of prayer and supplication there are men and women here that grace is about to rest upon your life because the dimension you are entering in the spirit demands that you must carry the grace the, the art of holding on to the altar I'm about to pray please you bring them out very quickly you help the ushers I stretch my hands inside and outside and I decree and declare that everyone who must carry that prayer mantle like a cloak upon your destiny take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now in the name of Barakos Ketepata outside, inside take that grace now the prayer fire the fire that drives your altar to a new dimension I release that grace I release that grace that impartation the grace to pray, the grace to travel, the grace to pray, the grace to travel, the grace to pray, the grace to travel. Sanana kapala na kena mana masana bakata, ekra kata bana kapala kasa bana kato brasilata. Hallelujah. The spirit of revelation that opens up scripture and grants you access to the mysteries. Paul said that you will have the spirit of revelation in the knowledge there is revelation in knowledge just because you have knowledge does not mean you have revelation i pray for someone like fire from heaven let the spirit of revelation rest upon you now rest upon a man of god upon a prophet upon an apostle upon a believer upon a teacher of the world receive that impartation now the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now please look at me. I'm seeing an eagle, and anytime I see this in my visions, it's an impartation of the prophetic, the grace to see and the grace to hear. Is coming on someone there is a young man there is a young woman is a season to enter into an authentic prophetic ministry I stretch my hands let that grace drink of that fountain drink of that fountain in the name of Jesus let there be a restoration of the authentic apostolic authentic prophetic ministry receive that grace receive that grace the eyes that see and the ears that hear the eyes that see and the ears that hear I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower I will see what he will say to me Yeah, 
Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Yahweh Sabao Hallelujah. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. There are people who have lost things. You've lost money. You've lost relationships. You've lost opportunities. I want to pray for you. A grace is coming upon you that will bring restoration. I don't know where you are, but at the count of three, shout the name Jesus. I decree and declare, Lord, by this shout, everyone who has lost things, lost relationships, let the impartation for restoration come. Are you ready now? One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus, the name that is above all names, the restorer, the restorer. Shabaka posteteba, ebra posteteba nekata. Restore, 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 restore. Opportunities, restore, opportunities. Restore mantles, restore graces. Oh, come, oh, come, me, Manuel, and run some captivity, Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and run some captivity, Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel has come to you, his Israel. He has come to you, his Israel. He has come to you, his Israel. Now listen, the Lord revealed to me that before Jesus returns there is going to be a restoration 
of the healing ministry like from the 60s and the 70s i know we are seeing healing but not the way it used to be and the lord is saying i have seen this many times in my visions that before he returns there are mantles that will go around from nation to nation searching for the next Ketril Kumans, searching for the next Smith Wigglesworth. There has to be men and women that will take on this apostolic regalia. And I came here tonight as one sent by God in the name of Jesus. I know there has to be someone in this crowd that must be part of that prophetic army that will be an extension of the healing stream wherever you are i stretch my hands may rafa the one who empowers men to take his healing power to the nations may that grace rest upon you now drink of that healing river may that grace rest upon you now ah, 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 ah. the foot of the womb will be fast we have to close I just saw like a child I, I saw like a baby wrapped up now those who are in front in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every impartation every deliverance that you've experienced it remains permanent in your life in Jesus name please return back to your seat rejoicing I want to pray very quickly you are trusting God for the foot of the womb I'm seeing please don't come out carelessly let's not make the place rowdy you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I just saw like a baby wrapped up. Make sure you are married. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Why are you here, my friend? You can go back here. When it's time to pray, you come up. Don't sit back when you know you need this miracle. Samalanda de malaso bala sobra ketis kavaliata. If you are a couple, it's all right. You can come. We're a family. We want to release our faith. It's time for you to carry your children. God, the power of God is moving here already. Supernatural about your name, Jesus. It's time to carry your children. Something happens when I mention your name. Hallelujah. Now, please look at me, ladies and gentlemen. You see, God is able to make the barren to rejoice. He's able to give children to her that is without child. It was God that visited Sarah, visited Hannah, visited Elizabeth, like he's visiting you now. First, I appreciate you for summoning the courage to come here. I assure you by the God of heaven, you are standing face to face with a miracle. I want to pray for you because most of these conditions are demonic. It is the devil. I don't care what the medical condition is. I've been in this business for a while. I know when Satan strikes. But here's what the Bible says. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. It says that he went about doing good, healing all they that were oppressed of the devil 
for God was with him. You came here because you have faith. Now it's time to receive. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, like Eli spoke over Hannah, and she returned according to the time of life, like Elisha spoke over the woman in Shunem, I stand by the privilege of priesthood. Every spirit behind barrenness, in the name of Jesus, leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Leave now. Every spirit responsible for barrenness, I come against you by the rod of a higher priesthood. In the name of he who died, every legal access you have over these families, be broken now. 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 In the name of Jesus, be broken now. Be broken now. I declare over you in the name of Jesus, according to the time of life, in the name that is above all names, go and return with your children. Go and return with your children. Some of you twins, some of you triplets, for all the years you have waited, I'm not just speaking, I'm prophesying. I say it again, some of you twins, some of you triplets, by the spirit of the living God, I place grace upon you. Be empowered. It says by faith, by faith, Sarah receives strength. I declare receive strength. Receive strength to be with child. Receive strength to give birth full time. In the name of Jesus. Don't say I've been pregnant before. They said, Master, we have toiled all night. But he said, nevertheless, in the name of Jesus, may it be different this time. Yeah. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Please return back rejoicing. Return back rejoicing. Return back rejoicing. Now hear me. If you are in business, you don't have to come out. But please indicate by the lift of hand. A grace wants to come on you. Legitimate, genuine, godly business. Not fraud, not kidnapping. Legitimate, godly business. Lift it up. A grace will come on you. There is a grace that causes men to prosper. There is a grace that attracts kings. It's only when you serve kings. Those outside too, God is seeing you and that grace will, will come to you right where you are. Father, you are the God of increase and you desire to bring increase to your people. I pray for every hand that is lifted right now. In business, some of you is not gone well. Right from this year, you are yet to see yourself stabilized. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Between now and the next three months, receive this as a prophetic word. I declare breakthrough. 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 Let every barrier break through by the power of the Holy Ghost. I empower you. Find favor. Favor with captains of industry. Find favor with kings. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Now hear me. If you are sick in your body, please place your hand. We may not have time to announce miracles, unfortunately, but you can do that at the subsequent sessions. But now is the time to be healed. Lay your hands. You are trusting God for a miracle. Lay your hands. If it's your head, lay your hands there. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. And by the way, you can stand in for someone. Someone may be sick that you know. You can be like the centurion and receive for them. Go ahead. I want to pray and rebuke that spirit. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within your mortal body, my Bible says that spirit is able to revitalize, quicken your mortal body. Some of you, what you call sickness is a verdict of death from the spirit already upon your life. A covering cast of death, just waiting for time to happen. Hallelujah. You need your body to be revived. Hallelujah, time the glory. Hallelujah, amen. 
Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. The Bible says, after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. Like he raised Jesus up. Therefore, I decree and declare right now, every spirit that is back of infirmities, blood conditions, bone conditions, organ failures, in the name that is above all names, I command that spirit to give way now. Shout a believing amen. I command that spirit to give way now. In the name of Jesus. The spirit responsible for health patterns. What happened to your dad? High blood pressure. Now you have it. What happened to your mom? Transgenerational health patterns. In the name of Jesus, we arrest those spirits now. Therefore, I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that purchased redemption for us. Be healed now. Be healed now. I speak life. Be healed now. Headaches. Be healed now. Ulcers. Be healed now. Bone conditions. Be healed now. Peptic ulcer. Be healed now. Heart conditions. Be healed now. Liver conditions. Be healed now. As a gentleman, you have a condition. You don't have to come out. You find it difficult to ease yourself even when you feel pressed. This is a symptom of enlarged prostate. I'm not a doctor, but this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. And the Lord is saying, I should rebuke this. You are a young man. You are not really old enough to even start talking about prostate. In the name of Jesus, anything cancerous roaming around your body, waiting for age to manifest, I declare it dies now. Shout amen, it dies now. It dies now. It dies now. Someone is having a problem with your throat. Very severe problem just right here where I'm touching. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is touching you right where you are. Right where you are. I see this almost everywhere I go to minister. There is a woman. It's an issue that is common to women. Severe, heavy bleeding heavy bleeding you are always in need of blood because there is heavy bleeding in the name of jesus that demonic occurrence over your body we declare this night it dies forever say amen it dies forever in the name of jesus christ there is a gentleman under your feet just under there is a burning and tingling sensation you feel this particularly when you wake up in the morning from sleep but the power of God is touching you right now heart conditions be healed now heart conditions be healed now heart conditions be healed now the Lord is healing diabetes in fact you have an injury that has refused to heal in the name of Jesus the Lord is bringing you life bringing you life eye conditions be healed now deaf ears be opened now in the name of jesus deaf ears be opened now in the name of jesus deaf ears be opened now in the name of jesus there is someone i don't know if you are here or you are falling online you are beginning to have severe migraine this thing happened to your father and they had to operate him from a condition of a brain tumor. It's an attack. Maybe you are following online. In the name of Jesus, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, it will never be diagnosed that that headache is a brain tumor. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. You were hit in a dream. 
from a dream you were hit and you woke up physically with that pain till today it has not gone in the name of Jesus I pray for you wherever you are under the influence of this grace I declare be healed now be healed now be healed now be healed now there is a gentleman the Lord is showing me watch this just right where my hand is something started growing out it looked like a lymph node and then it started growing out just like some projection and it has refused to go down in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for that person the way it came let it go back I say it again the way it came let it go back back to hell back to the devil the way it came let it go back in the name of Jesus you are having a problem with your right tooth right tooth your molars it's very severe pain in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead I want you to be to listen to me you are healed right now there is a woman I'm seeing a woman you are watching from the United Kingdom you are watching from UK you are watching from UK you have a son about six years old that son is autistic that has been your desire he's an autistic child you know not coordinated in the name of Jesus I use that case as a point of contact to everyone here in Ghana in Nigeria in South Africa in America in Canada every autistic child everyone who is incoherent discoordinated in their minds and their understanding let there be healing now in the name of Jesus let there be healing now in the name of Jesus now hear me whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus and by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare be healed now be healed now be healed now be healed now everyone here trusting God for a job an honorable job I prophesy to you according to the time of life soon after this conference in the name of Jesus may a helper help you get a great job an honorable job receive this as a prophetic word in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for everyone here particularly the young men you are trusting God for establishment he said after you have suffered a while that the God of all grace will establish you I pray for you the grace that establishes men early may that grace rest on someone rest on someone rest on someone in the name of Jesus please hear me every parent here I want to use you as a point of contact to pray for your children and the scripture is Psalm 112 if you're a parent please agree with me I want to pray for your children the Bible says blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed that wealth and riches shall be in their house and his righteousness endures forever there is an onslaught from the devil to turn children into rebels and that they become the reason for the death of their children Hophni and Phinehas, the sons of Eli, were the major causes of his health depletion until the issue of the ark finally caused him to fall and broke his neck till he died. In the name of Jesus, your child will not be the reason why you die. Your child will never be the reason for your pain. I'm speaking to parents. Every spirit that wants to manipulate children to bring rebellion, to bring satanism, all kinds of practices I declare your children will serve your God your children will serve your God by this prayer we call every prodigal son every prodigal daughter around Ghana hear ye the word of the Lord by the mercy of God return home return to the place of redemption return to the place of deliverance in the name of Jesus more prayers and we're done let me pray particularly 
for those who labor in the gospel in this land most people may never understand what an average man of God goes through serving the Lord I'm talking of a minister with integrity and love perhaps only their wives can really tell what they go through or their husbands as the case may be priesthood demands honor from those who do it well the times invested in prayers the persecution that comes with bearing the name of the Lord it takes grace and stamina to remain I'm praying for men of God my first charge to you servants of the living God and I say this with every sense of respect for those of you who have veered off and have compromised and gotten into practices that are not of God I do not condemn you but there is a chance to return back to authentic ministry the days of playing games with God's people manipulating God's people for gain dipping your hands the things that are both of God and any other thing that can help uh -uh. he said as for me and my house I'm charging every man of God so we don't shout amen for nothing especially younger ministers who are coming because of the pressure to make it some of us submit to very dangerous mentorships that introduce very satanic extra biblical practices sincerely so it matters whose hand comes upon your head are we together I'm praying for every man of God here if there is anything you have dipped your hands into knowingly or unknowingly that has become a corruption to your spirit man and can destroy the purity of your kingdom service I cry unto the God of all grace and God's mercy in the name of Jesus be purified from that evil now be purified from that evil now but I pray for you the grace to be consistent in prayer receive it the grace to love the Lord and study the word receive it the grace to be a man or a woman of God of solid character and integrity receive that grace in Jesus name I pray for you that any association whatever it is that will lead you to a corrupt state and destroy the purity of your call this night we severe you from it forever we severe you from it forever but haven't prayed that by the mercy of God I declare blessings upon you may help us rise to support your ministry may help us rise to support your call you will never lack help us I push you by prophecy step into the next level of your ministerial call in the name of Jesus final prayer for this conference I want to pray the grace called favor there is a grace called favor if you didn't receive anything in this conference here is one thing you must receive the grace called favor the number one reason why people's lives change the number one reason why people step into the manifestation of prophecy the proof of favor is beyond money the proof of favor is access to the hearts of men who likes you matters when God wants to help you he shortens the distance between you and a man John 5 7 and the important man said I have no man I have no man I have no man I know where the water is I know what it can do but I do not have the leverage of the help of men in this bedeviled world you need the support of men and I'm praying for someone by the mercy that God has shown me by the mercy that God has shown us here under the influence of the corporate anointing I pray for you for your ministry for your business for your family receive this grace called favor shout a believing amen receive this grace called favor may that grace redefine your finances may that grace redefine your ministry redefine your business redefine your family men you do not know they will arise by God to help you I say it again 
strangers will promote what you represent in the name of Jesus you will not know them yet they will defend what you stand for you do not know them yet they will advocate for you they will sell the grace of God that you carry to the nations in the name of Jesus hallelujah I remember a request that was made let me honor it right now if you are a worker in this church you are a worker we're praying for everybody but you are a worker in this church in any capacity please lift your hand I want to pray something upon your life the Bible says the worker is worthy deserving of his wages we have enjoyed God in this conference but this has happened through the sacrifice and the labor of faithful men and women tired but consistent fatigued but remain faithful I pray for you everyone who is a worker in this church on account of your service hear me I speak to you by the Spirit of the Living God that as this conference ends your testimony begins the end of this conference is the beginning of an unending season of testimonies testimonies of help testimonies of favor testimonies of restoration testimonies of breakthrough testimonies of spiritual upliftment in the name of Jesus the tears that you cried before this conference may it never repeat itself in your life again it will be a sound of joy it will be a sound of victory in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus everyone keep standing we cannot end this meeting without giving someone an opportunity to know Jesus to love Jesus and to serve him when all else fade it is your relationship with Jesus and without wasting your time without patronizing your mind and attempting to cajole you you are in this place you have heard the word of the Lord you have hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.